Hey everyone, it's Zinnia here, and today I wanted to show you part two of how to make a rhythm game on the phone. So in part one, we got these arrows moving up the screen, and now in part two, I'll show you how to add your own song and make the arrows move in time with the notes. And at the end, I'll also show how to add a score and combo meter. So yeah, let's get started. So step one, let's get our own music in this game. So you can choose whatever song you want to have in your project, and we'll use Octo Studio to record it. Also, if you want to download this project to be the base for your game, there's a link to download it in the description. And this version has some slight improvements over part one, like I color-coded the variables, and I made each piece of text in the game its own sprite. So with this project ready to go, let's record our sound. So I'll go to this bass arrows sprite, and once you've got your song ready to play on another device, you can just tap record. You may want to trim off the silence at the beginning of the clip, so you can just tap to crop it. And if you want to get more than 30 seconds of your song, you can just record multiple clips. And I'll make this song play when the play button is pressed. Okay, so we've got our music in our project, but right now if we press the play button, the arrows just all endlessly go up the screen, and we want them to actually go in time with the notes. So step two, let's make that happen. So let's go to this purple arrow sprite, and right now we just have it, you know, looping forever. How about instead we go to the bass arrows and have them send out a message, and we could call it play the purple arrow note and then we can go back to the purple arrow and get rid of this when play button and forever loop and instead we can put on top when i receive play the purple arrow note then we'll have it go up so let's test that out i'll go back to these base arrows and just send out the message and there you go now we can just send it from that sprite whenever we want one quick thing that i want to add to this arrow is now let's make it hide when it gets to the top of the screen and then we want it to show up every time it appears at the bottom of the screen. So let me try that out. That's looking pretty good. Okay, I will make broadcasts like this for all the other arrows and change out the code. Do, do, do. Okay, so we can send out any of these notes at any time that we want. Now for step three, let's work on sending them out with the timing of the song. So from this bass arrows sprite, let me see what happens if I drag out when play button pressed wait one second and then play the note. So tap play. Okay, that looked pretty good, but it's a little hard to tell when exactly the note is over the arrows. So next, let's make these notes light up when the player should tap on them. So I'll go to this purple arrow sprite and to make a sprite light up, I can drag out the set color block and set the color to white. And then if I drag out another set color block and set the color to nothing, then that will set it back to its usual color. And I'm gonna drag out an if else block because when the arrow's height is around here, we want it to light up. Otherwise, we want it to set the color back to purple. So how can we use this if block and test if the arrow is around here? Well, we can check the Y position of the arrow. So we want it to light up when it's in around this range, which looks like it's when the Y position is from about 126 to about 135. So we can say if the Y position is less than 135, and we can drag out another if block and say if the Y position is greater than 126, then we want to set the color to white. Otherwise, set it back to normal. So let's put this inside a forever loop and put a when play button pressed block on top and let's test it out. So the arrow's going upward and there you go. It lights up right when it passes the base arrows. So that's looking great. I will long press on this code and copy script to the other arrows so they do it as well. And this is gonna be really helpful. Now I can see that the note lines up well. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag out some more weight blocks and test out how the timings are working. Honestly, that was not that bad. Obviously in your song, you can adjust them however much you want. You can also try duplicating sections of notes, see what happens. And with some trial and error, testing out the timings like this, you can build your song. Couple things to mention, once you send a note of a certain color, you'll have to wait a bit before you can send the note of that color again, otherwise it will interrupt its own journey. I ran into this a couple of times. And also, if you change a wait time earlier on in your code, 
that will affect the wait times later on. So if you have it wait less time up here, you might have to then make it wait more time at some point later. Oh, and you know what? I'm gonna make these arrows hide at the beginning of the game. So let me just give that code to all of them. And now that I've got my wait times all created, let's just try it out. So, can I hit these fast enough? Okay, not missing too many. There you go, so that's looking pretty good. And so now, for the next step, let's make them be able to score points and let's keep track of a combo meter. So I'm gonna go to this base arrows sprite that sort of controls a lot of the main game. And I will say, when the play button is pressed, I will set the variable score to zero. So that looks pretty good. Actually, you know what? Let me move it out of the way. And how about if the player gets good on a note, then we'll increase the score by one. So how can we do that? Well. In the arrows, we're sending out this message good whenever the player gets that for a note. So we can go back to this main sprite and we can say, when I receive, let me find it, the message good, maybe I'll change the score by one for a good note. And then you can just duplicate this and then decide how much you want a perfect note to be worth. So maybe in my game, I'll have a perfect note be worth three. And then you could also make a missed note cost the player points. And yeah, you can try out whatever numbers you want. So let's just see how that's working. Okay, getting some pretty good points. So we have a way to keep track of the player's score. And last but not least, let's add a combo meter. So basically for the combo, let's make it so that, you know, when the game starts, your combo is zero and then Every time you get good or perfect on a note, your combo increases by one. And then if you ever miss a note, then your combo gets reset back to zero. So let's do that. At the beginning of the game, we want to set the combo to zero. So I will drag out a set variable block and make a variable called combo. And then we've got that set to zero. And if the player gets good, we want to change the variable combo by one. So let's just try that out. I'll try to get a good rating. Okay, yeah, there we go. The combo increased by one. And then same thing, if the player gets perfect, we want to change combo by one also. And if miss is received, then let's s actually not change. Let's set the variable combo, where is it? Here it is, to zero. So let's try that out. So I'm gonna try to get a perfect. Okay, there we go, that increased my combo, but then every time I miss one, that is setting my combo back to zero. So let me try and play this game and see how it goes. Oh, I got perfect, haven't missed any yet. Let's see if I purposefully miss one. Okay, yeah, there we go, my combo resets back to zero, that hurt. So there you go, now you can actually start playing your song. So that is what I wanted to show you in this part of the series. Uh, in other videos, I could show things like how to make an animated character and more. But for now, I hope you have fun making your rhythm games with any song that you want. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.